Our allegiance for young New Zealanders, the pet whale. On a beautiful island, there lived a chief called Tanaru and his son Tuharu. One day, Tuharu came to his father, looking very unhappy. Father, he said, I must speak with you. What troubles you, my son? asked Tanaru. Tuharu hesitated for a minute, then blurted out. My mother. I want to know about my mother. I had thought her to be dead, but my playmates taught me about her. They say that she is not dead, that she left me because she does not love me. Is it true, father? Tanaru thought a while before replying. It is true, son, that le she left you, but it is not true that she did so because she did not love you. Then why did she leave? questioned Tuharu. Tanaru hesitated again. Will you promise not to hate me if I tell you? he asked, for I have been very unkind in the past. I cannot hate you, said Tuharu. You are my father. Hush then, answered Tanaru. I will tell you. Tuharu settled himself at his father's feet, and Tanaru said, your mother came here a long time ago. We found her on the beach near to dying, for she had floated in from the sea. She recovered, however, and some time later she became my wife. For a long time we were very happy, but then we quarrelled, and I was so angry that I sent her from my house. For many months she lived alone, and I made no attempt to see her, until I learned that you had been born. I tried then to see her, but she would not receive me. When her brother arrived a little later to take her home, I could not stop her from going with him. However, she did agree to leave you with me. Tuharudu wanted to cry, but a chief's son must never do that, so he fought back the tears and said, Father, I must go to her. Tanaru nodded his head, and if I can, added Tuharudu, I shall bring her back again. So Tuharu took a canoe and some provisions and paddled away to the island home of his mother. Tanaru could not be sure that Tuharu would ever return, for the great distances between the islands were fraught with danger. He had lost his wife a long time ago. Perhaps now his son would also be lost to him. One day, as he sat before his house trying not to think too much about the dangers his son would encounter, a boy came running to him. Come quickly, he cried, there is a whale on the beach. It's stranded on the sand. Tinaru went at once. The village people had all gathered on the beach and were flushed with excitement. The men had already grabbed their weapons and drawn them, anxious to kill the animal. We shall feast well tonight, they said to their chief happily. But Tinaru looked at the whale for, and thought, what a beautiful animal. It is far too beautiful to kill. Besides, if I am kind to a child of Tangaroa, perhaps he will protect my son in return. So deciding, he said to his people, now, no, we will not feast well tonight. Put down your weapons. This animal is far too beautiful to kill. Let us save him. There was a deadly silence. The people were disappointed, and some of the men protested. It will die anyway, they said. How can we save it? Then waving his arms at every man, woman, and child, Tinaru said, Go, all of you, fetch gourds and bring them here. The people went quickly, and when they returned, their chief spoke again. Now fill your gourds with seawater and bathe the animal. We will keep him wet and cool until the tide turns and he can swim away again. The people obeyed. For many hours they carried water from the sea and poured it over the whale. While Tinaru stroked and patted him, from time to time he checked to see that the whale's breathing hole was free from sand. Sometimes he whistled and a soothing melody. The whale had ceased to thrash about and lay quietly, enjoying the administrations of Tinaru and his people. 
The people too were now much happier. They could see that the whale would not die and they began to sing as they carried the gourds of water back and forth from the sea. At last the tide turned and before long the water was deep enough for the whale to move. When he flipped his tail and moved majestically away, the people cheered happily. They did not feast well that evening, but they talked long into the night about how kind and clever their chief was. For the first time since his son had left, Canero slept soundly. Now until, not until the first flickers of early morning did he dream, and then it was a pleasant dream. To dream that his wife and son were riding home upon the back of a whale. Later on that morning, Tanaru was awakened by excited voices, and as he rose from his bed, he noticed that the people were all rushing down to the beach. Look, they cried, the whale, it is back. Tanaru dressed quickly and joined the people on the beach. There in the bay, swimming back and forth, was the whale. Tanaru called for a canoe, and he and some of the men paddled out into the bay. When they were still some distance from the whale, Tanaru bade the men stop paddling. Then he stood up and whistled. The whale had been swimming away from them, but when the whistle wafted across the bay, he turned and came alongside the canoe and lay there. The men cheered as Tanaru reached out to stroke the whale, laughing and chatting. It was as though they were old friends. You will be as a son to me, said Tinaru, and I will call you Tutu. Then to everyone's amazement, Tinaru climbed over the gunwale of the canoe and onto the whale's back. There was a moment of breathless silence. What would the whale do? Would he fight? Would he die? Would he capsize the canoe? But the whale did not don't do any of these things. Slowly he moved away from the canoe and with great thrusts of his tail he headed out into the open sea. There was a moment of panic among the astonished people. One of the paddlers in the canoe immediately commanded the others to take up their paddles. Quickly he said, put all your strength into your paddling. We must keep up with the whale lest he take a dive and drown Tinaru. Muscles bulged on the sweaty backs of the paddlers as they dipped in time. Never had they paddled so rapidly before, yet still they could not build up enough speed to catch up with the whale. Tinaru was soon just a speck on the horizon and the paddlers could only return home. The people of the island waited on the shore all morning, hoping that a miracle might happen and their chief return. In the afternoon, all the men launched their canoes to search for their chief, but they returned in the evening, tired and convinced that their chief had gone forever. They were all about to return to their homes when someone cried, Look, there, upon the horizon, I see something. People strained their eyes to see. Yes, indeed, there was something. Did they hope it was Tanaru? Some of the people climbed to the cliff tops where they might get a better view. It was growing dark and it was very difficult to see clearly, but the speck on the horizon did appear to be getting larger. Then the whale came into sight, and still sitting astride the back was Tinaru. A great shout of applause echoed along the beach as the people dragged every canoe down to the water and paddled out to meet their chief. That evening, everyone gathered in the meeting house to listen to the story of Tinaru's adventure. Long into the night, they sat enthralled by Tin as Tinaru told of the islands he had visited and of the places in the ocean where fish teemed in their thousands. From that day on, whenever a fishing expedition or a visit to another island was planned, Tinaru travelled upon the back of his whale. His fame travelled far and wide, and men envied him and his good fortune. When several months later his wife and son returned, Tinaru's happiness was complete. Cheers everyone. Uh, please support our local producers and craftspeople as much as you can, and have a good one.